I really want to find a way to do is to flip around the statistics right now. So they say that about 96% of businesses fail in their first year. And I want to find a way to be able to make that that 96% of those businesses actually like crush it and are doing amazing and like totally killing it in their first year and beyond. And so what I kind of want to walk you through today is, is despite all of the things that I've seen in large corporations that I didn't necessarily like, there was one thing in particular that I noticed that they did, and they did really, really well. And um, from my experiences talking to different entrepreneurs over the last several months, I've noticed it's an area that sometimes entrepreneurs aren't necessarily that strong in. Um, so that's what I want to walk you through um, and kind of teach you by the end of this evening, you know, exactly exactly what that looks like and, and how you could do it for your own business. Um, what I found and what I noticed was a lot of small business owners, they, they thought a lot about, you know, hiring a bookkeeper and doing taxes. And those things may or may not be, um, you know, those deliverables are necessary. But really, if you look at a large corporation, those compliance items, they're a tiny little fraction. Like they're not the things that are ultimately going to make your company um, make more money or make you smarter about the limited resources that you have and how you're going to spend them. So um, I call it financial forecasting, um, but really what it is is, about, is is a very simple exercise of thinking through where do you want your organization to be at the end of the year and, and how are you going to build out a plan to make that happen? So I noticed entrepreneurs would be very focused on the accounting side of things and they would get kind of lost in all of these details and they would get caught up in like what accounting software I'm going to use and, and you know what bookkeeper I'm going to use and they just have so much to do and they try to kind of outsource it um, or they get overwhelmed because their background might not be, they may have picked up all kinds of views that like, oh, I'm just not very good with numbers or all kinds of different um, different concerns that they would pick up. Uh, or, or they would, if anything, they would be doing numbers as part of their business plan and they'd let that business plan go and just kind of collect dust. Um, so what I want to show, and, and I'm going to share my screen here in a second, is the, the practice that I've seen really large businesses do and, and do as a really good course correction. So um, we, you can call it business finance, you can call it forecasting, but really what it is is setting up a cadence of figuring out right now, we're May 14th, it's about thinking about where do you want to be December 31st. So that is basically 231 days from now is going to be December 31st. So what you want to kind of think is, where do you want your business to actually be at that point in time? So this might sound a little bit weird, but maybe just like for a second with me, like close your eyes and think about where do you want to be on New Year's Eve? You know, it's New Year's Eve is going to come and go one way or the other. Like, where do you want your organization to be at that point in time? And just think about what, what stage you want to be at. Um, so I'm going to get you just to close your eyes for one quick second and think like, what, where do I actually want this to be? And, and what do I want to see happening? And you know, what is that going to look like? So just give it a second to actually feel like if, if it's if you're if it's New Year's Eve and you're looking back on the last, you know, I guess we're seven months until then. And it was a phenomenal year and everything went, you know, really the way you want it to go. What what would that actually look like? Right. Like, would your business be, you know, fully launched and in operations and things are going awesome and you're feeling like you're making an impact or, you know, where where would that be? So do you guys have kind of like a, a very kind of a picture of what that would be? Yeah. Okay. So now what we want to do is take that picture and we want to translate into um, what do you want that to be December 31st as your bottom line profit number? And, and this is important, even if your organization is a not-for-profit or even if your organization is still kind of getting ramped up, because any organization is going to need to have some sources of funding and is going to need some way to sustain itself. So what I want you to do is before we before we kind of get into the whole spreadsheet piece, I want you to kind of pick a number of what you want your bottom line number of once you've seen all the money come in for you this year and all your expenses flow out and it's New Year's Eve, how much money do you want your organization to have made or to have collected to be able to use for whatever the organization's charity or cause happens to be? Um, so 
give it a second. And, and it can be really hard if you're kind of starting this off. You might not really have a good sense. Even if you don't know, remember that you can always change this plan. But the important thing is to pick a number. Um, you're not held to that number because you can refine this plan as you go. But you're, you're better off to just pick a number and build a plan for there. Um, so do you guys have kind of a number of what you want that to be? You can keep it to yourself. You don't have to share it, but do you have kind of what your, what your number is? Okay. So once you have your number, that's your bottom line number. And that's going to be your December number. What we're going to do when I go into this spreadsheet is we're going to build out this number on two different dimensions. One, we're going to build out that number month by month by month. So if that's what you want to have by December 31st, what do we need to have happening each and every single month between now and December to make that happen? And then think of that as kind of going along a row. The other thing we're going to do is take that number and we're going to flush it out according to the different lines that have to build it up, right? Because it's not all going to come in as one number, right? You might have to have various different products and service offerings. They may be offered at different points in time. They might come from a few different areas and you might already have certain expenses that you're committed to. So what we're going to do when we get into the spreadsheet is actually going to be working backwards from what your vision is at the end of this year for where you want to get your business to take that number and we're going to flush out that number and we're going to break that number down into every single month what we want to have happen and break that number down in um break, break it up in terms of what are the different things that we need to do to make that happen um and you might be wondering like why why are we going to do all of that um but it, it's actually really important to to walk through that process because even if right now you're in the early stages and you're kind of making a lot of different assumptions um you might not exactly know like if you're still in like the business plan writing stages of your business you're making a lot of guesses you're making a lot of assumptions you don't know exactly what that is going to you don't know what's going to work and what's it's not going to work. Um, but by putting it on a piece of paper on a plan that you can fit onto, you know, you know, a one page document that you can you can give to someone, it, it empowers you in a lot of different ways. So you don't have to know the nitty ditty, like the nitty gritty details of exactly how you're going to make that happen in November or in October. But by kind of like anchoring in your mind, this is this is kind of where I'm trying to go. Um, it does a few things. If you're working with other people in your team, you can help them see, here's the magnitude of what we're going after. And if you're working with a mentor or an advisor or even other entrepreneurs, you can actually use this one very simple piece of document to say, look, I'm, I'm struggling to I'm struggling to hit this. And then your conversation becomes a lot more um concrete, you can move it a lot further. So that's what we're going to actually, um, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you how we build it in Excel, but you can honestly do the exact same thing with a blank piece of paper. The technology is not nearly as important as it is the process of picking a number and then working your way back to what what needs to happen. And then I'll kind of walk you through when and where and how you're going to use that plan once you have it kind of created. So I mentioned a little bit of once you have it created, you'll kind of be able to use it to, to brainstorm even for yourself, right? You might be putting together a number in a column and you have no idea how you're going to hit that number. Like if you're in the early stages, you, you really might not know. Um, but it gives you something that you can continuously go back to and say, this is my goal. This is what I'm reaching towards. And you can start doing some brainstorming to make that happen. Um, so if you guys are ready, we'll, we'll dive kind of into the Excel spreadsheet and you'll see, I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple because again, like you can get so lost in the details with some of these things. Um, it's really easy to get lost in, like, have you guys heard of terms like cost of goods sold, contribution margin, operating profit, net profit, gross margin. It's easy to get lost in all of these different terms. And at the end of the day, they're, they're only subtotal. Totals. That's all that they are. They're only subtotals. And if those subtotals don't help you, don't use them. They're, 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 that's all there. There's nothing more magical to it. So um, let's actually dive in. 
and we're going to, I'm going to share my screen. So we'll build this one here together. And again, what I want you to remember is building a plan, even if the plan is not accurate, is going to be better than not building a plan. Um, a lot of times we have this tendency of saying like, oh, I have to wait until I'm like caught up with all the bookkeeping or, oh, I have to wait until I know exactly specifically, et cetera. You are better off creating a plan today, right now, immediately, and have that plan be way off because you can refine it. But the the biggest tendency we have, and, and your brain is going to say, um, okay, I'll, I'll do the plan later because you, you think it's so big and it has to be done perfectly. And, and that's going to be your biggest enemy from, from doing any of this. So um, what we're going to basically do is organize. Again, we kind of talked about how we're going to organize it this way and organize it that way. So organizing it this way is just going to be as simple as May, June, July. And then I like to just spread it out like this. So we'll go all the way until December. And this is going to be our totals. So simple as that. It doesn't need to be complicated. Um, I've worked in planning and forecasting areas. Um, I had a portfolio of $1 billion, so pretty pretty significant dollar amount. And do you know what system they use to do their forecasting? Microsoft Excel. Um, I've seen the same thing with, with other really massive um, energy companies. Really, Excel as a tool or Google Sheets or whatever spreadsheet you have can work perfectly fine because it's really what's more important is going to be the thought process that you go through. So step one um, is just going to be to write your columns above the top. Step two is going to be, I'm going to call them revenues, but we can easily just call them money coming in the door and then money going out. We'll call them expenses, but um, but really that's going to be as simple as we're going to keep it. And then at the very bottom, we're going to call it our bottom line. And those are going to be the only things that we're going to even um, that we're even going to focus on. So like I said, you can get really caught up with these things, worrying about things like contribution margin and all kinds of subtotals that exist in and around here. But if you can build a plan that isolates your money coming in, your money going out, and your bottom line is, of course, what's left, right? Money in less money out equals your bottom line. Everything else is just a subtotal. And if that subtotal isn't helping you, stop looking at it. If it helps you, use it, great. Um, but again, don't complicate things more than they need to be complicated. So um, that's going to be kind of where, where we're going to start. Um, when it comes to the expenses, you might want to start on the expenses area before you start in the revenues. And the reason for that is depending on what stage you're at in your business, most businesses are going to incur expenses before they incur revenue. Um, because regardless of the nature of your business, you're going to have to spend a little bit of money to get things up and running. So expenses seems to be something that you are incurring um, kind of a little bit in advance before you've got things up and running. What I like to do is separate it between um, ongoing and one time, one time here. So when you think of ongoing, and, and all we're going to do is just brainstorm a list, and I'll get you guys actually even to, to throw out some of the things that might be ongoing in your business um, or some of the one-time expenses that you might see going on in your um, in your business, but we're just going to calculate, we're just going to figure out what are those categories. So we're not going to worry about populating everything in here. We're just right now going to try to get the broad strokes of what are the different ongoing expenses that you incur. Um, so how about web hosting? Are you guys planning to have a website in some way, shape, or form? There's probably going to be some web hosting. Um, what other kind of ongoing expenses do you think that either of you might incur within your business? Um, any kind of, uh, yeah, anything come to mind? Softwares, um, you know, sometimes some uh, like email providers or email or marketing providers. Some people may end up using uh, virtual assistants. You might see some, some VAs coming up in here. Um, what are some other ongoing expenses that you might incur? Possibly some insurance is something that you might kind of have continuously depending on your business. So you may have some insurance coming up here. Any others that come to anyone's mind as kind of those ongoing expenses? 
If you are a home-based business, you're going to be starting out as a home-based business. Um, you're going to want to have a line for your home office, and that is going to represent a certain portion of your, your home that is going to be allocated to your business. And then let's think about some one-time expenses. Can you guys think of any that come immediately to mind as like a one-time expense that you might incur? So depending on the business, you might have to purchase a vehicle. Um, you might decide to do a special marketing campaign. Remember, it is better to create the plan and have the plan have holes in it. And it's better to create the plan and have rough estimates than to have no plan at all. Then what you're going to want to do, once you kind of feel like you've captured a reasonably comprehensive view of what your expenses are, um, you're going to start by kind of putting some rough estimates in there. If you happen to be all up to date with all of your bookkeeping, and, and most people are not, if you are in that situation that you're all up to date with it, you can use those numbers to populate in there. But even if you don't have it, you can use your best estimate. So if you had an idea that your web hosting cost was going to be, I don't know, let's say $40 a month, um, or your software, I guess it really depends on what the software is, but let's call it 75, you know, you can kind of come up with what these, with what these are, um, and you'll be able to kind of cascade them down. So we'll put them just for simplicity, we're going to just call them all the same. But what you would do is just spend a little bit of time putting in what you think these are going to be. Now, a lot of your ongoing expenses, you're going to actually be able to just copy them all the way over because they're going to be more or less the same. Um, you can go back if you happen to know that, you know what, we're not going to continue this software in December and you can actually remove it in there. Um, and then your one-time expenses, you might want to choose when you're actually going to purchase them. So maybe you're going to purchase the vehicle in, you know, July. You might decide that that's when you're going to start a new, um, perhaps you're going to start a, a lease of some sort. Um, you, you might choose to put something like that in there. Maybe you're just going to buy it. Just a very, very simple and expensive vehicle to get around. Maybe you're planning to do a really big launch in August and you're going to spend $1,000 on different things. Um, but the idea as you go along here is just start putting it on paper because too often we, when you're an entrepreneur, you have a million things going on in your brain and your brain is trying to do this, but your brain is getting confused and, and short circuited and it's kind of going in all these different directions. So putting it on a piece of paper is kind of saying to your, like, it's kind of your brain's way of saying, ah, thank you. Like I can, I can actually start to think of other things because it's trying to pull it all together. And again, <clears throat> don't worry so much if your first numbers and your first estimates in here are are even completely off. That's not what's the most important. Then you're going to go up here to your revenues. And this is one where at the very beginning, you're probably in your business plan going to have a decent idea of how you think you're going to, what you think your offering is going to be and what you think your pricing is going to be. Um, but there's a decent chance that reality will hit and it'll be something different than what you had originally thought. So what you might want to start in here is how many different products or service offerings are you anticipating? Um, so um, so Ter uh, Tara or Miranda, do either of you kind of have um, certain kind of what your business will be um, will be selling or how it'll be fundraising? Do either of you have um, some examples on, on your revenue side? Like how what you would ultimately end up doing in here is you'll be able to, and, and I'm sure courses are offered at all different kind of price points, but what you're going to want to do in here is kind of think of it as break it down, if you can, into two different variables. Um, so you're going to have almost, um, I think you could almost call it the easiest way I would suggest is just have three lines for each of your revenue streams. So if you're planning, <coughs> excuse me, if you're planning to start launching a course in July, um, you might know that you're going to sell this course for, let's say this is going to be um, a $5,000 course, let's say. Um, and maybe your train the trainer is going to be a price point of, let's say it's a $2,000. I'm making these here up. You know, you can, you can include the ones that actually make sense. And then consulting, I'm imagining that is kind of like an hourly kind of charge. So, so you might set whatever that hourly rate is going to be. And again, no idea what that would, that would be. But you're kind of trying to say, what is the unit price? is what your first line is. And the second line is going to be number of units. So think of this one here as going to be your unit price. This is going to line is going to be your number of units. And then this is just going to be your revenue, which is really nothing more than 
units times price, right? Um, and then we're going to repeat the same thing for each of the different service offerings that you would ultimately end up having. So you're just going to go through a very simple process of, okay, how many people do you anticipate will order the course in any given month? And maybe you say, you know what, I think it's going to be 10 people this month. And I think it's going to be, or maybe you think it's going to ramp up slowly. So maybe you think, you know what, three this month. And then, you know, we're planning that come November, we're going to want to increase the price because right now we're doing something promotional. And, you know, we think in November, our price, we're going to be able to justify a bit of a higher price. Um, but really, all you're doing is taking your revenue streams and you're disaggregating every single revenue stream and you're breaking it into three pieces. Um, one is your unit price. Number two is your number of units. And number three is just... Um, the multiplication of them. So let's say that you were planning to be selling your course for 5000 You thought you were going to sell three of these courses. And then you thought in August you'd have five. And then maybe you thought you were going to really ramp up to 10 and then 10. And then you thought it was going to really take off with 25 and then kind of stay steady at 25. Um, that is the number of customers, the number of units, the number that you anticipate having. And then your revenue is really nothing more than the unit price times the number of units. And so here I'm going to put in this D4 to have this. Yeah, so this would be dependent on your specific business. So this is kind of the number of customers that you think that you're going to have. So you're going to make this up because if you are just kind of in that launching phase, you can get this number from a couple of different spots. Um, if you've been running your business for a while, you'll probably have um, a certain baseline of, you know, okay, well, I've been getting this many customers signing up every particular month. Um, but whenever you're coming up with a number of units, you don't want to just think about what's happened in the past because you want to always anchor yourself. Remember how we started this off? We started it off with what's that number you want at the very end of the year. So this number for July is the number that you are actually inventing. It, it is actually, it's, it's your invention, it's your, it's your intention, it's what you're kind of setting, and it can be informed from two different places. It can be informed from the past of what's happened before, but also informed by what your goals are and where you want things to go. Because even though you might have had a steady level of customers sign up in the past, you might actually want to be able to really excel and, and, and really grow your business. So you don't want to be too anchored just specifically in the past. Um, but really, those number of units, they're, they're really the numbers that you are picking. They're the numbers that you're choosing for what and how you want your business to grow. Um, and then by putting it on here, um, you can actually kind of look and you can say, all right, well, if I really want to get 25 customers um, signing up for my course in December, you know, what do I need to ramp up in terms of my marketing efforts? What do I need to ramp up in terms of all of these different things to make that happen? So, so these numbers really are based on um, your, your intention. And, and it's a fine line that you don't want to be too conservative and you don't want to be too aggressive, but you want it to be something that's going to let you kind of, whatever your goal is for that year, that's where you kind of want them to come from. So if you remember any of your revenue lines, you're going to actually have down here, this line here is going to be numbers. This is going to be a unit price, and this is going to be the actual um, number of number of units, which might be number of customers. And you're going to essentially repeat the same process down here for the other offerings. So, so say you're training the trainers, maybe you anticipate something very similar in there. And then with your consulting business, similar idea. Your unit price might be I'm going to charge $200 per hour. And how many hours do I think I might be consulting on? And, and this might be where you think you're going to consult for 10 hours a particular month. So again, you're going to multiply unit price times the number of units. And this third line here is going to be the revenue you'll ultimately bring in. So you would essentially repeat that process for all of your different revenue streams. So what we will do is then actually come back and we're going to take the totals of each of these. And I use a sum formula, but you can really do it in pretty much any, any particular way. So let's do, let's do sum. And remember, you're really only wanting to sum total the, 
<clears throat> excuse me, sum total the revenue line, right? These two lines here, unit price and number of units, was just for you to be able to kind of think through and run some different scenarios. So we're going to want to sum total the revenue from each of these different streams. And then we're going to want to sum total um, all of the different expenses. I do recommend adding a line for your revenue subtotal. So if you're going to have more than one revenue stream, you might want to total them all up together here. Um, so under this business, we would be anticipating, and again, these are made up numbers. You'll make up your own, but we're calling it, you know, one point, almost 1.1 million would be our total revenue in here. And then our expenses, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a particular sum along here from the very beginning. And we're going to go all the way down for all of our various different expenses. And then we're going to want to come up, same idea, just like here where we actually built a total revenue line. If you kind of follow along here, we're going to want to build a total of all of our expenses line. So our expenses, we're going to sum this guy up here. All right, so, oops, this should say expenses. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the um, we're going to do um, a, a tally up, and then we're going to kind of anchor it back to that very first mental exercise you did when you closed your eyes and you came up with your number. And then we're going to refine the plan to kind of link it back up more closely to where your number was at. So the bottom line, and again, don't get so caught up in all of these different subtotals. All I want you to really focus on is going to be the revenue less what your particular expenses are. So that would give you a, you know, a 1.3 coming in here. Oops, 1.3 in here. Um, no idea if that's realistic for this particular business. You know, I'm just making up numbers as, as I go. But this is the exercise that you're going to want to go through for your own business of doing it, um, of kind of setting that goal and then doing all of the detail and then seeing the detail and your total goal. Is it perfectly aligned? If it's perfectly aligned, awesome. You're you're done done and dusted, you've got your you've got your overall plan. But there's a good chance that it may actually, the number might be higher than or it might be lower than. So, um, so that's where we would kind of then start looking and we'd say, all right, let's now use this, our one piece of paper, and let's start actually analyzing it. So again, the reason that you do a plan is so that it can inform you and it can inform the decisions that you might want to take. Um, so far, maybe I'll pause now and I'll see what kind of questions you guys have so far based on what I've walked through. Does this make sense? Where are the areas that you feel like you might kind of struggle with with one of these exercises? It's really easy to get scared of these numbers and it's easy for things to get really, really complicated. But I think if you remind yourself that any financial tool is a tool, meaning it should be there to make your life better. And if it is comp if it's if it's making you feel, you know, confused and it doesn't make any sense and you're not using it to drive decisions, then it's defeating what the overall purpose is. So so the whole idea is to create a financial plan that's going to make sense to you um, so that you can start looking at it and making different decisions. Now, any financial plan you make is going to come across reality, right? So let's say here the month of July rolls around and you had thought in July you were going to be able to get, you know, um, you thought you were going to be able to sell the course for $5,000. And it's kind of looking like, you know what, people are kind of saying, you know what, I think that's a little too pricey. Um, you can change the thing, you can change the variables in here and kind of say, okay, well, what would happen if I were to say, you know what, I'm, I'm hearing from people that they really want to attend this course, but they think 5000 is too much. What would happen if I changed it to, you know, $3,000? It's going to instantly tell you what is that impact going to be on your bottom line. But it also allows you to say, you know what, if I actually drop the price to say 2000 maybe I would all of a sudden be able to get even more people signing up. So it allows you to run these different scenarios so that you're always playing with, um, like you, you always want to bring your financial plan back to the view of, so what? So what am I going to do with this? Because you want it to be simple enough that 
if you get to July and and let's pretend that let's pretend you get to July and things feel catastrophic. So you're in July, you kind of put all this time and effort in getting ready for a May launch. You're kind of getting things ready in May and June for a launch. July, you thought you were going to have these five customers and then things are just like, let's say a total flop. And um, then you, you don't bring anything in. And then you only have one person signing up for this. And and then, then what you can actually do is use this plan not to make yourself feel bad. Use it to kind of say, all right, what can I possibly do differently? What can I do differently? And, and keep it to one page so you can print it off. You can share it. You can go to people that you trust and say, look, I had this like big goal for where I wanted my business to be by the end of the year. I'm not at the end of the year, but so far this month, I can see that I'm off track. What else should I do? What should I try? And and then people can look at it and they can say, well, okay, well, let's look at this. You know, you have these three revenue streams, but have you considered you know, this fourth revenue stream that you never even considered could be something that you are able to layer in there. Or maybe they look at it and they say, well, yeah, but that's probably not surprising because you spent only $75 on marketing. You know, maybe you're going to want to try in August to boost that marketing number and see what happens. Um, part of the reason why I decided on the name of Learning Lab is that I think we need to get to a point with small business where, or sorry, with all business really, where um where we're treating every single month as a laboratory, like as a lab, that you're running a series of different experiments and you are seeing what happens. So I think one of the the, the problems that a lot of entrepreneurs run into is they will have a million different ideas. And, and the reality is if you're running a small business, for the first few years, you are going to have a, a to-do list that is so long. You are continuously going to have more to get done than time available to do it. But the problem becomes you run around like a crazy person. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. You're so, so busy. But you forget the basic scientific method where what, what do you do if you're running an experiment, if you're actually treating it like a learning lab? Well, first of all, you come up with your hypothesis. And your hypothesis is in the month of July, or let's say in the month of August, my hypothesis is if I spend my time doing what I'm planning to do and I spend my time doing this, my hypothesis is that I am going to generate this revenue. Um, so one, you need to be making the plan for that month to say, here's what I anticipate. Here's what I think is going to happen. Here's my hypothesis. I'm going to run a series of experiments. And maybe those experiments are, you know, you're running Facebook ads or, or Instagram ads, or you're, you know, trying to get on different podcasts, whatever it is that you happen to be doing for your, across your different channels. Those are a series of experiments that you're running. And then at the end of the month in August, you're carving out time to say, Okay, August, I thought I was going to get five customers signed up for this course and five customers in Train the Trainer and 10 hours of consulting. And then you look at what actually happened in August and either you got exactly what you planned, you got something or you got more or you got less. And, and it's about looking at it from not saying like, oh, I'm, I'm so bad and I'm completely failing because I got less. Um, well, what if you get exactly what you had planned? Awesome. That's that's great. Um, keep doing what you're doing if that's what you're if that kind of keeps you on track. But you, you're basically either going to hit what you had wanted to hit or not hit what you're wanting to hit. And the problem that I think sometimes we run into when we're running a business is um, if we fail to make that plan up front, we run a million different experiments, but we never have an anchor to say, well, did that experiment generate the results I thought it was going to generate? Or we start to kind of panic and we say, like, I'm I'm doing all these different things. I'm running all these different experiments um, and they're they're not working. And then we start to feel really bad instead of realizing that business is extremely iterative. And if, if you're starting something new, it might be several months where you're having to kind of go back and test and say, all right, now going into September, I want to design a new experiment. I want to try this, this, and this. I want to change this messaging. I want to change my offering. I want to try these different things to see if that will move the needle on my September numbers. Then you get your September numbers and you say, all right, did I get what I wanted? Nope, I didn't. October, 
what, what you really want to get to the point of saying, okay, October, I'm going to try a new series of experiments. Did they work? Yes or no. Um, what happens is if you've ever heard the statistics, they say that 96% of businesses fail in their first year. And one of the things that I want to find a way to make happen is like I was mentioning, like 96% of them to crush it. And the reality is very, very few business go from, you know, they're, they're crushing it and they're hitting their goals in July, August, September, October, and then something catastrophic happens in November and they go bankrupt suddenly. That is very rarely, it's possible, but it's not what most commonly happens. What is far more common is that you start to panic and not want to see the numbers and you just block it out and you you don't look at them and you just keep working harder and harder and harder, but you're not being informed and anchored by what your goal is and running it as a series of experiments to say, well, did this work or did this not work? And and I think because it is money, we tend to associate a lot of um, shame with it, right? And money is still a very taboo subject where, you know, people will talk about their branding and they'll talk about their website launch, but very few people are willing to say, look, my business isn't like no one wants to be that. No, no one will actually, no one really wants to have those conversations of saying like, I'm struggling to get my numbers where I need and want them to be. And, and I think that's where we really need a sense of community or, around it. Because if you're in that situation where, where you're in kind of distress over what your numbers are, that's a situation where the more distress you get into, the more short-term thinking you go into, and then it starts to spiral. And that's a very time where you actually most need community and you most need to be able to print off your page, go find someone you trust and say, here's my plan. Here's the results I'm getting. What else can I be tweaking to start hitting these numbers and, and start just viewing it very simply like an experiment? You know, a scientist would never look at an experiment where they set a hypothesis and they ran the experiment and they got a result different. They would never look at that as like, oh, I've, I've failed, you know, and have associate some kind of like angst associated with it. Like never. They would just be like, hey, those are the results. What am I going to try next? Right. And so I think that's the culture that we need to to shift. And, and I think by putting it together in a in a financial plan that makes sense to you is something that can, um, yeah, like just just help you kind of go back to those numbers from the lens of, okay, what else do I need to do to kind of try and hit that goal this month? Try it. Did it work? Yes, no. And then um, then go on from there. So